Stonehenge in England is one of the most awe-inspiring ancient sites on Earth. Even today, its origin and purpose remain shrouded in mystery. One thing archaeologists know for sure is that its construction took over 2,000 years. One thing they don't know is who built it. There's no doubt the site, originally comprised of some 150 stones, was the work of some advanced civilization that knew enough about the sun, moon, and stars to align these stones with the heavens in a very specific way. But what if I told you we have our very own Stonehenge in the United States? And that it's possible the two sites were built by the same people. America's Stonehenge is a prehistoric site in Salem, New Hampshire. The owner says the stone structures here date back 4,000 years. I got a call from his son, Kelsey. He's discovered a solar alignment, an example of archaeoastronomy that he wants me to see. So this is the uh, Central Observatory. And this is what I was telling you about why we call America Stonehenge. Just like at Stonehenge, someone placed standing stones, large vertical rocks, in a circle. The placement is key. When viewed from the center of the site, each standing stone lines up with the sun on important days of the year. The solstices, the longest and shortest days. The equinoxes, when the sun is on a level plane with the Earth's equator. And the cross-quarter days, which fall midway between them. This is the uh, summer solstice sunrise stone. So on summer solstice, the sun basically just rises right over there. Right over the stone, just kind of comes out diagonal and then it just kind of tracks across the sky. And then on the sunset, it just comes up right over to right over here. summer solstice sunset stone there. You realize this says an awful lot about your site. Whoever was here is marking these important dates of the year, like many ancient cultures all over the world did. I've been seeing this a lot lately. It's called archaeoastronomy. It's how ancient cultures use the sun, moon, stars, and planets in their architecture and design. You know, I'm looking at that stone, and it looks very interesting. Is there any chance we could go down and take a look at that closer? Oh, sure. Can you tell me a little bit specifically what happens with our alignment here? Sure, yeah, well, basically what happens is on summer solstice, the sun will rise right about, right about in the middle here and just hmm. kind of go at almost like a perpendicular to where, this, where the stone is and just go right across and just kind of rise up, up diagonally. The sky. Well, we think actually originally probably was going to be up here. And, you know, over the course of time, it probably moved. OK, yeah. well, if it moved, that's very interesting because over time, the Earth's axis does shift. Right. You probably remember the earthquake in Japan recently. It was documented that the uh, the axis of the Earth actually moved about eight centimeters. Wow. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but over time, over thousands of years, it adds up. Mm -hmm. So actually, to have the alignment move makes a lot of sense. And that's important because we can actually use that for dating. Mm -hmm. And so as you know, the Earth's axis shifts, these alignments do shift. And that could indicate a significant length of time. Well, you know, we actually had someone come up and check that out. Really? And they, uh, from how far it's moved, they actually dated the site back to about 3,800 years ago. 3,800 years, OK. Well, I tell you what, that's really an important thing, because there are many people that think that by using archaeoastronomy, that's actually a more accurate way of dating than carbon-14. So if that's the case, You've got a pretty ancient site here. Clearly, this isn't natural, <laughs> a natural position. This was placed in the ground. It appears to have been quarried. It looks to me like it's actually been worked a little bit. And all the surfaces are definitely weathered, significantly weathered. Right. And uh, definitely indicates time. This has been here for, for a long time. Well, you know, also, we call this place America Stonehenge, obviously, because of the standing stones. but. There's another thing that I found that I think really directly ties the site into Stonehenge in England. Really? Yeah. 
Well, if you've got time, I'd love to see it. Sure, let's go. Kelsey, let's see what you got here. All right, well, a few months ago, I was on Google Earth, and uh, I was kind of drawing all the lines out on the alignments, just basically to see where they go. As I was drawing one out on the summer solstice sunrise alignment, yeah, I kept taking it out further and further, and uh, you know, I noticed someone over in Nova Scotia and in Newfoundland. A north, kind of a northeast direction. Right, okay. yeah. And then um, as I took it over, I noticed someone right over in England. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So I kept zooming in further and further. And it was what through Stonehenge. What? It's going all the way over towards Stonehenge. Not only does it go just through Stonehenge, it actually goes right through one of the trilathons at Stonehenge. Wait a minute. Through one of the trilathons at Stonehenge? That's right. From America's Stonehenge? Stonehenge is the most well-known megalithic site of all time. It's a sacred site, but no one knows who built it or exactly what it was used for. But maybe whoever built it built this too. And now I'm heading there to see if these two ancient sites with massive standing stones are connected. So Henry, I'm, uh, I'm here because I'm investigating a uh, megalithic site in New Hampshire called America Stonehenge. And there appears to be a connection to Stonehenge here. Stonehenge is the most well-known megalithic site in the world. It consists of 150 enormous stones, the tallest of which rises 22 feet from the ground. But in the beginning, around 3100 BC, it was just a henge, a ditch, a bank, and several round pits. But even then, it was a popular gathering place. Being a geologist, I'm very interested in the rocks, the stones. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the stones. There's a variation in the geology, is that right? Yeah, there's two different types. The very big stones uh, are sarsen, uh, and they, they come from sort of the local area, you know, within okay. 20 miles or so. All right. The blue stones, which are the smaller ones, they're still very big. Yeah. They come from South Wales. So, yeah. You know, so how, how far away is that? Well, it's about 150 miles, but if you, if you wow. think actually how they would have transported yeah. them, that's not straight. That's a, that's a so, heck of a task. 240 miles, maybe? I mean, that's at the heart of it. That really uh, suggests sophistication and coordination and something at a pretty complicated level. I think there's a huge amount of sophistication. People do know what they're doing. I mean, the fact they can build Stonehenge, the amount of labor which goes into building yeah, something right. like that is incredible. I mean, people have estimated something like 30 million hours or, you know. 30 million just, hours? Just of, of work. And how many yeah. people say to move one so, of those stones? There's no real way of telling it, something which we continue to sort of think about. But the fact they did it, I mean, it's, it's a massive feat of engineering. The blue stones may not be the biggest stones here, but for me, they're the most interesting. They're said to have spiritual significance, and I think America's Stonehenge has that too. The blue stones came from a land that was believed to have healing powers. Archaeologists think Stonehenge may have been a franchise of sorts, a closer version of a faraway sacred place. There's no doubt these stones were placed here for a reason. And it has everything to do with the sun and the solstice, just like it does at Stonehenge in New Hampshire. If we think back to ancient times, were there rituals going on? What were the people doing at this well, site? We could see ceremonies following on the summer solstice, you know, on the day of the solstice, people starting the day at the eastern pit as from here you can observe sun rising on the solstice right. and then they're following the sun round so basically the actual this long rectangular enclosure is basically just a walkway so you follow around the perimeter following the sun in front of you all the time but it's a bit like a church or a cathedral now you have multiple functions and i think all of those would be happening here why do you think it was so important for these ancient people to track the movements of the celestial bodies the people are farmers they rely on seasons they rely on understanding they know when to plant crops and when to harvest them. But actually having a sense of how that time develops, I think, is really important. You know, the, the importance of these, these bodies, I think, is fundamental to being human and being farmers, but also it's something which they celebrate. So here we have uh, the alignment, 
uh, that starts at America's Stonehenge at the center of the observatory. And then as you extend a line through and continue that line, it comes across the Atlantic and comes right here to Stonehenge. When you look here at a close-up, um, you can see that it goes right through that central trilithon. Then, if you extend that line, it goes to Beirut, Lebanon, the home of the Phoenicians. As incredible as it is, it appears to be there. What's your reaction? I think it's incredible. I can't imagine there's a link, other than the possibility that people are marking the same sort of alignment. And I think also, when you extend it onto the, the Phoenician worlds, their world starts around about 1200 BC. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this site's sort of finished, really, by about 2000 BC. So there's a good 800 years or so difference. Interestingly, I think Stonehenge has attracted people in prehistory from quite far, far away. There's, there's a burial just over, over there. There's a couple of burials from over there, one from about 1400 BC. So it, people are moving here. It's feasible that Phoenicians might have been, you know, there's, it's not beyond possibility. Um, but they couldn't have been involved in the design of Stonehenge because it's too early. Well, I think the one thing that we can definitely agree on, if nothing else, places like Stonehenge and America's Stonehenge prove how important tracking the celestial bodies were to these ancient people. I think the fact that this place directly aligns with America's Stonehenge on the summer solstice is no mistake. Archaeoastronomy links many cultures together. To me, it's proof of an advanced understanding of archaeoastronomy and of an ancient connection to the United States.